Hello. In this video, I'll show real-world applications of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, with special mention of applications that are directly relevant to machine learning. All right, let's start off with some relatively simple uh, examples of eigen decomposition. So returning to a topic, affine transformations or 2D geometric transformations that we already talked about right at the beginning of this segment uh, on eigen decomposition. So of all the, the videos that we've been talking about, uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues in this machine learning foundation series, we started off by talking about affine transformations like scaling and shearing. And so we've come full circle now. And now with you know, that understanding of, fine, of affine transformations from a while ago, in the meantime, we've learned a lot about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So now I can reveal to you that when we are performing some equal scaling on a 2D object, so we're scaling as much along the x-axis as the y-axis, then you use a matrix like this. I'm using the NumPy or PyTorch or TensorFlow double square bracket notation uh, to annotate um, this two by two matrix here. And so we have Ks along the main diagonal in the top left corner and in the bottom right corner of the two by two matrix. And for equal scaling, the eigenvalues, both of them, are equal to K, to that scaling factor. And um, the eigenvectors will end up being non-zero. For unequal scaling, so where we are scaling more along one axis than the other, so here we're scaling more along the vertical y-axis than the horizontal x-axis, in that case then we will have a different k1 and k2 value, and the first eigenvector will correspond to one of those k's, and the second will correspond to the other one. And uh, example eigenvectors uh, include these ones here in that kind of circumstance. And then finally, we have shearing here. So uh, in a early video in this segment, we had the Mona Lisa and we were showing how um, she can be sheared. <laughs> so um, this is the shearing operation um, applied. This is a horizontal shear specifically. I don't have an example of a vertical shear, but um, it would be a circumstance where the red vertical vector was the eigenvector. And so, um, yeah, the, there would be a shear where the blue vector is knocked off um, its span instead of the red vector like we have here for the horizontal shear. So where Mona Lisa is being twisted um, sideways, uh, like left to right with the horizontal shear, the vertical shear would mean um, a shear vertically, up and down instead of left to right. And here are the matrices for carrying out a horizontal or a vertical shear. Um, so you have a couple of ones and then a K either in the top right corner for the horizontal shear or in the bottom left corner for the vertical shear. And um, for the horizontal shear, we end up with um, all of our eigenvalues being equal to one and equal to two for the vertical shear. And here are some example eigenvectors for both of those circumstances. Okay, moving on now to some slightly more complex um, applications of how eigenvalues can be used. So there's this concept of types of matrices, which is largely beyond, in fact, other than us discussing it right now on this slide, we're not going to talk about this again in my Machine Learning Foundation series. But I wanted you to be aware of these terms because you might see them in the literature. And so we have these four types of matrices, positive, definite, um, which is a kind of matrix um, that has all eigenvalues being greater than zero. We have the positive semi-definite type where all the eigenvalues are greater than or equal to zero. Negative definite where all of the eigenvalues are less than zero. And negative semi-definite where they are less than or equal to zero. 
So applying a matrix of one of these particular types to some vector x has a characteristic impact on that vector x. And you can see section 2.7 of Goodfellow et al., the book called Deep Learning, um, which was released in 2016 by MIT Press and is available free online. And the reason why I say again here is that I reference this same section in the same textbook in a video that is uh, just a, a little bit ahead of this one in my Machine Learning Foundation series if you're following them along sequentially. As an example of the characteristic impact that a matrix can have, um, one that we've talked about a couple of times already in this Machine Learning Foundation series is the situation uh, at least one eigenvalue is zero, which is what we have in the semi-definite case, whether it's positive or negative semi-definite. And recall that in that circumstance, we end up with a determinant of zero, and the matrix is not invertible. It also means that the volume of the tensor that we apply a positive or negative semi-definite matrix to will end up being collapsed in at least one dimension. So we talked about that in earlier videos in a lot of detail. I'm not gonna dig back into that um, a whole bunch right now. But I wanted you to be aware of these, and now let's move on to some uh, very specific real-world applications that are quite tangible. So eigenvectors as underlying characteristics of a data set can be recombined into any members of that data set. So for example, um, eigenphases. So here we have uh, four examples of eigenphases. And when we have our eigenphases, we can recombine these characteristic eigenphases from the data set in order to recreate any of the members of this data set of faces that was used to create the eigenphases. We have a similar kind of concept for eigenvoices, where you have these characteristic voices that can be recombined to recreate any of the voices in a given um, data set of voices. Same kind of idea for eigenfrequencies of, say, vibrations. And in quantum mechanics, we see eigen decomposition as being critical for understanding how molecular orbitals work, the probability of electrons occurring in a given place around a molecule, um, which is a concept directly related to the Schrodinger wave equation of uh, particle behavior. At the time of recording these videos, I am under uh, lockdown due to the coronavirus, which uh, hopefully by the time you're viewing this video, that is an epidemic that has long passed. But uh, on the top of my mind is the reproduction number R0 from epidemiology, which is um, related to how contagious a virus is between people. Top of my mind here and something that depends on eigen decomposition to calculate. Of course, as we've already seen, eigenvalues are directly related to determinant calculations. Um, so we detailed that in the determinants and eigenvalues video from earlier in this Machine Learning Foundation series. Another couple of applications of eigen decompositions that are directly related to machine learning are uh, singular value decomposition and the Moore-Penrose pseudoinverse. We are going to be covering these topics uh, next in this Machine Learning Foundation series. And then finally, we have principal component analysis, which is a machine learning algorithm that we will um, learn about after singular value decomposition and the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. So uh, we will use singular value decomposition to uh, compress the um, size of media files of data files. Uh, we will use the Moore-Penrose pseudo-inverse to fit a regression line to points. And we will use principal component analysis to identify some underlying structure in unlabeled data. Yes, we've made it. 
That brings us to the end of segment two on Eigen Decomposition. All right, so I hope you're excited about what's coming up next in the uh, next segment, segment three, including those topics, SVD, the moore penrose uh, pseudo-inverse, and principal component analysis, um, to review what we covered in the segment that we just finished on Eigen Decomposition. We learned about applying matrices. We talked about affine transformations, which is a specific uh, kind of uh, matrix application where we do the kinds of 2D geometric transforms that we recapped uh, early on in this video. We talked about eigenvectors, of course, characteristic vectors of a matrix, and eigenvalues, which are characteristic scalar values for the matrix that are tied uh, to a particular eigenvector. We talked about matrix determinants, as well as their relationship to eigenvalues, and we developed a geometric intuition around the relationship between eigenvalues and matrix determinants, which also taught us about the behavior of eigenvalues and eigenvectors in general. We talked about matrix decomposition into eigenvectors and eigenvalues and how we can do um, matrix multiplication of those decomposed eigenvectors and eigenvalues in order to reconstitute the original matrix. And then in this video, we talked about applications of eigen decomposition. All right, so with this video, we are now approaching the final segment of subject two of my uh, Machine Learning Foundation series. So that second subject is Linear Algebra 2 Matrix Operations. The subject began with a quick review of introductory linear algebra from the preceding subject. And then we've just now finished that beefy eigen decomposition topic. And coming up next, we've got a segment on matrix operations for machine learning, which includes lots of real world applications of linear algebra, training a machine learning algorithm based on some linear algebra concepts, and we've already talked about some of those things, singular value decomposition, the moore penrose pseudo-inverse, and principal component analysis. That's all coming up next. It's exciting. I can't wait to tackle it with you. To be sure not to miss the next tutorial in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. You can follow me on Twitter too, if that's your social medium of choice. See you next time.